these roads. It just looked so good and lit up. It feels great in the car right now. It's honestly never felt so nice or looked so nice. I'm loving it. All right, we're gonna do the coilovers on the Mazda 3. This is gonna be a very basic overview. Raceland has already done a really good job. That's the company that makes the coilovers. And you can see that's their coilover compared to the stock front and then their rear compared to the stock rear. Got the height adjustability, dampening, all that good stuff. We can control the dampening right there. And look, these aren't the most expensive coilovers on the market. I'm a business and like a marketing guy, right? I'm not like an elitist when it comes to the parts that are used on my car. But one thing that I'm really intrigued by with Raceline is that they can make good stuff and sell for cheap and that freaks people out, but I don't care. So before we get going, just a couple things. The other side is really low right now. So it's kind of actually making that wheel gap, I feel like a little bit higher. If I walk over here, you'll be able to get a much better idea of what we're aiming for. Basically, now, basically we're getting rid of all of the wheel gap here. You already saw that we rolled the fenders and my cat just wants to show you that he's awesome. Come here, hey, come get on the camera. Yeah, that's a good kitty, that's a good kitty. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about the tools. People were kind of concerned that I wasn't using jack stands on a couple of the videos. So we've got our jack stands. We've got our wheel stops for the front. So I can work on the back and not worry about e-brake. And just a bunch of hand tools. And then this, this little fancy guy, I'm gonna tell you about something, a little trick on the front struts. Way to save you some bucks if you happen to ever have to do this job. But if not, just enjoy. Time lapse should be quick. Cat will be there. Let's get dirty. So the fronts are pretty easy. Just gotta yank these guys out. Kitty, kitty, what are you doing, kitty? Kitty, why are you opening that tree, kitty? our fancy little piece of metal comes into play. I'm gonna lift up on this whole assembly so that I get a little bit of slack right there, push that dude out of place, and then I have to struggle with this little connection. So this dude is pinching onto the strut. What I need to do is I'm just gonna feed the bolt that I just took out of it, this guy right here. I'm gonna feed it through, it went in that way, but I'm gonna now go this way. I'm gonna stick this little piece of metal in it before it hits the opening that it slid through from the other side. And then that's just gonna force this little knuckle to spread open just enough so that we get a gap around right there. Cause as you can tell, or maybe not, it is super crusty and gnarly in here from the strut just destroying itself over time and spiders getting up in there. I hate them. next part was really hard for me, so I'm actually going to do what I did on the other side. And I'm gonna wedge my breaker bar to the bottom of the strut, and I'm just gonna jack it up, and it should remove it from right there. Let's see. This is definitely not the hardest part at all. I did have to drill that out just a little bit so that that brake line fitting could go back in there. But other than that, it's pretty simple to do it. This is just like a basic slap it on in there and bolt it back up and we're good. One thing I have heard a lot of complaints about though, is that if you don't clean all this stuff up and lube it real well, then that new, that new strut is gonna have a hard time slipping into place where it needs to. So I'm gonna get something to clean this up with and we'll drop it in. So the other side looks about just like that, as far as the threading goes. So tighten these guys up.
actually really glad I dropped this, but that gets covered up. Yay! <laughs> no one will know. My sway bar is now in the way. That's what I'll do. The old beater bar. Second time I whacked the crap out of it. What an idiot. Good camera though. Okay, a couple last minute things that I, I noticed. Uh, I, I was super, super tucking hardcore in here. So um, I definitely noticed that this is what happened. I heard the tire catch a little bit and it was right here nowhere else looks like got really any action um, so I think right here is what had its fun with the tire so obviously those coils had to be adjusted just a little bit so that they were higher so I've got basically the very beginning of the third thread right there showing so I'm gonna go adjust the other side right now and then I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna roll this the rest of the way because it's actually coming out right now and it needs to be going in. So I didn't go as far enough down right here as I needed to, not realizing that the tire was gonna come into contact, but I did get a chance to play with the little adjuster tool and I found that the only thing that you need to do is remove one bolt so that that will drop down. I just did it on that side. Now I'm gonna do it over here on this side. So that one bolt right there, has gotta come out. Check it out, these Raceland coilovers, they feel really, really good. I've had some bad coilovers in the past. I've had some that felt like you were on bricks. I don't know, I've had a, quite a, a few different experiences with coilovers, but dumping off of that dip that I just went over right now and it feeling as good as it did, honestly, I think people are spoiled. Damn, look at those low beams looking gnarly right now. I think people are so crazy spoiled in their expectations and these feel dope. These are, I think they're like $500 coilovers and that trips me out because most people should not be spending tons of money on their suspension unless they're doing some sort of track events. And hey, if you wanna take race lines to the track and beat them up, like go for it, see what happens. I don't, I'm certainly not gonna to try to talk anybody out of something like that. But you know, if you're gonna spend 2,500 bucks on some just dope ass track ready coilovers, all custom valved and things I don't know about, then I, I would say you should probably have a car that's worth more than your coilovers. In my case, I don't. <laughs> I've got these $500 coilovers that are fantastic on this $1,500 Mazda 3. If it were a $10,000 Mazda 3, I think it'd be dope because they really just provide what I'm looking for. They gave me the drop that I wanted. They're comfortable. They were easy to install. I just, I, I really don't know what people would be complaining about if they had the experience that I did on this. I think a lot of it is, oh, my super fancy buddy that has brand name everything and Supreme Yeezys and everything else says that those are bad because they're $500. Like, all right, cool. Well, I guess you can't make everybody happy, right? But I'll say this, I totally screwed up with my wheel setup. I didn't realize, but I had nine and a half inch wheels on the back. Now granted they were, I think plus 38 offset and the correct offset for this car is I think a plus 43 according to Scott at Koenig. So, I was rocking way, way, way wider rear wheels than I needed to. And these coilovers, even though they were dropped the way that they were, they just, they weren't bad. Even with completely wrong fitment and everything else, they were pretty dope. But now, now that I actually have the right wheels on the car, I can just take every driveway like 
like honestly, everything feels really good. Let's resume after I get some chicken nuggets. Thank you much, have a good night. Look at them cut off lines though, bro. So back to what I was saying, these feel really good. Ooh, that was the first time I just checked myself. I was like, oh, wait a second. I don't wanna, I don't wanna curb the, the Burger King drive-through curbs with the new counter grams from Koenig. Yikes, kind of forgot myself for a minute. It's been nice having a car that I literally just don't stress about, period. I'm just stoked on these things. These are literally perfect for what I needed. They make the new wheels look great on the car. I don't know. I think you should go get some. If you're in the market for a drop on your car, whether you have some wheels now or you wanna get something in the future and you just want your car to look good but not sacrifice all the ride quality, uh, number one, get the right fitment wheels, that's for sure. And then get some Raceland coilovers. Like I honestly am saying that without having been paid to do so or anything. I just, I think it makes sense and I'm so glad that I'm going through this little build series right now on the Mazda because I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a good time. I'm appreciating the parts, the upgrade feel, the upgrade look, all of those little things on such a modest car and doing the installations, of course, myself. And I don't know, it's it's been a really nice little journey for me. So thank you for enjoying this one with me. We're gonna see some more upgrades to the car this time, including some lights. As you can tell, I've already got the craziest lights on the road and it's gonna just get better and better. So stay tuned, my boys. I'll see you next time. Whoa, that was a tumbleweed. All right, <laughs> there we finally got a little bit of fender rub in action. You have to do a very fast U-turn to, uh, to max out spacing on the front fenders.